got a new microphone. Actually, it's the same microphone. I've had this microphone for a while, and I've used it for voiceover stuff. Um, but I just added this microphone arm to this setup because I figured every time I shoot one of these videos, I have to get out a stand and put uh, sandbags to make sure that it's balanced and there's a boom arm coming over and it's just out of frame. And I figure you understand as a viewer that somewhere all along, there's been a microphone. So now you see it, but I feel like it's easier. Um, it makes my setup just a little bit faster and the sound quality is a little bit nicer because this is meant for vocals and that sort of stuff. So, so today we're talking about microphones and money. And really we're, we're done talking about microphones. But with money, lately I've been in a situation where I've been doing this for nine years, over nine years, almost 10 years. And I've been doing video projects like standalone for really the past like three years, just doing video production. And I've switched my pricing to accommodate uh, different people and the way that I've learned the video projects go. And so for the most part, I'm hourly. And that allows me to be fair with my pricing. And if somebody is really efficient to work with, even if it's, say, say we're shooting a two minute video, if somebody can get their interview out in, in five minutes and then I can edit that, that's going to go real quick and it doesn't take long if somebody else is poorly prepared or something and when they go to shoot their interview it takes an hour because we're doing it again and again that's more footage to go through it's longer to actually acquire in the first place so i i do it hourly so that i can be as fair as possible and then what this does is a big part of production is editing and, and post-production obviously and so in in a lot of corporate cases there's this argument to be made for how good should a video be? Because a lot of the post-production work that, that I enjoy doing and that really makes a project stand out is in the color correction. And, and to do your color perfectly in a video or as close to perfect as possible, you need to capture your footage a little differently than you would if you know you're not going to do color correction. So you capture your footage in a flat color profile. Um, you, you capture it maybe a different format. And then when you edit it, you do things to each clip to optimize it, to make sure that it's balanced and beautiful. And then you do things to your audio to tweak it, to take out background noise, to, to normalize the levels. And all these things take time. And in my hourly setting, that time becomes money. And so I can look at a project and it's very easy to say I could do this project in five hours of editing and it could be chopped up and fine. We could capture the color just however it turned out in camera, put music on it and a title at the end, five hours, boom, done. Or we could make it a good video, which may take 15, 20 hours to go through clip by clip to make sure that things flow perfectly, to make sure that things match up with the music and that there's subtle transitions and to make sure that the audio between each clip fades properly so that you don't have these little popping sounds between each clip. There's a lot of little things that some people may not notice. Some clients may not notice, but other video producers notice. And if my goal as a video producer is to do better and better work and to work with bigger and bigger clients, a huge part of that has to be creating work that's going to appeal to that next level. And if I keep doing projects for people who don't care and people who just want something quick for as cheap as possible, then I only have those sort of projects to show to, we'll just say Prana and Cole Headwear and VC Ultimate and my target beautiful brands to show them something that I'm capable of. If I only have these projects that I, I played down to, then I'm never gonna be able to play up. And it creates this strange dynamic where at a point, I just need to put my foot down and say, you know what? The projects that I do cost this and I'm only gonna do it if I can do 15 hours of editing. And where the, the tough part comes in, where the conflict comes in for a, a creator, and especially somebody in this sort of transition, is if I say, you know, it's going to take 15 hours to edit and therefore cost X, and they say, we don't have the budget of X, could you do it in 12 hours? I could say, sure, we, we won't tweak the audio as much. There may be a little background noise in there and, and we're not going to color correct as thoroughly. Um, we're not going to go through and denoise some of the footage, something like that. And, and then what if it's, well, it's, it's 10 hours. And so there's a point where you have to put your foot down and say, I'm not going to do a project for that. And yet, as a guy who struggles to say no to people who need help, I get people who come to me and they're like, you know, we just need this little project. It's not a big deal. We don't have a big budget. And if I have the time, 
I'll do that, but ultimately it just puts me in this situation where I'm just perpetually doing work at this lower level, and I need to put my foot down and say no, and that's very difficult for me to do. And so I had this discussion with with Jesse and with my dad and with a few other people, and the the analogy we were using and, and what I'd be interested in your thoughts about is a coat rack, where if you took a master craftsman, and I am not, as usual, saying that I am a master craftsman of video. I'm good, but I'm not being bold here. Um, But if, if you wanted a coat rack, you could make a coat rack. I could make you a coat rack by taking a two by four, drilling four screws into it and giving it to you. And yeah, that'll hold a coat up. That's a minimum viable product. Is it gonna be pretty? No. Is it what the client needs? Yes. And will different clients want a more beautiful coat rack? They'll want you to stain it. They'll want it to be all wood and have beautiful, smooth edges. And you can sand it and you can refine it and you can uh, you can put extra designs into it and paint it. You can do all sorts of things to it to make it better and better and better and better. And I want to be somebody who is known for making really good coat racks, uh, but video. But... I struggle to say no to the people who just need me to put four screws in a board and hand it to them. And my, the argument that's made to me by people who are sometimes my my business mentors, they say, well, hey, money's money. If you can do it, sure, go for it if you've got the time. But at a point, then my portfolio becomes just a whole bunch of two by fours with a whole bunch of screws in it. And that doesn't get me to the coat racks that I want to be making. So this is where I'm at right now. This is the discussion that I'm having in my head over and over again. And as I'm doing this next wave of proposals for for some, some new potential clients that I have, I'm trying to just say, you know what? I want to make you something that you're going to love. And you may not even appreciate all the work that goes into it. But if you'd like me to make you something, I'm going to make you something really, really good. Could I make something and dumb it down and, and keep your cost crazy low? Sure, but that's not what I want to be doing. That's not what I enjoy doing. And that's not the kind of product that I'm proud of delivering to a client. So that's where I am with figuring out my prices. And if you're a creator, if you do stuff professionally, I'd love to know how you handle that cutoff. Do you just have a low number that says, you know, I'm not going to touch a budget if it's less than this. If it's $2 less than that, will you think about it? Or will you just say flat out, no, it's got to be this or more. And if it's not, then it's not worth my time. Because I've noticed that budget aside, there has been some trend, causation, correlation, I don't know, but with people who push back on budget, with clients that that push for really, really low budgets, they end up being somewhat difficult to work with in general. This is not true of all, of all small budget clients, but small budget clients have historically for me, a lot of them, once they've argued about the price, they then push back on different editing tweaks and they ask for more and more and more and more while still pushing back on price. And when you say, well, that's going to take an extra hour, they say, well, could it take 30 minutes? And there's this weird discussion and it creates a whole situation that makes me uncomfortable and I really don't like it. But It's a situation that I find myself in from time to time. So I want to know, if you're a creator, if you're a video producer or an artist or a graphic designer, you can always dumb your work down and do it in less time for less money. What do you do? Where do you draw the line? And and where do you make your... where, Where is your standard for what your project is? And do you keep it there so that you can continue moving forward and moving upward? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to do. If you're an artist of any kind throw me some comments um, because I want to have that discussion. Thanks for watching. The end. I hope you didn't mind the microphone. I tried to keep it to the side so it wouldn't block my face that much, but I'm sure it did at some points. And for that, I'm truly, truly sorry. Until next time, I'm Sean. See you later. Everybody in Everybody in front to the back now, back now, back now. Everybody from the front to the back now.